Hello, this is Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1165, the Tiny Gnomes, and you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. So this is a cute little set to make these small gnomes, and you can decorate them for holiday or just year-round, and you can even make a caroler. There are 11 dies, and starting with this one that cuts the head, the hands, and the nose, there is an optional stencil feature for eyes. Most of the time I have the hat down over the eyes, so I don't use the stencil, but it's there if you need it. One of the hats in the set has an optional stencil emboss feature, so you can cut it plain, you can emboss it, or you can emboss and stencil it. There are two dies in the set that have an optional stamping feature. So the beard, mustache, and braids have an extra layer in the die that can accept ink. So if you run those through with no ink, it's just going to press that pattern into the piece. And it definitely looks cool even with no ink. So you do not have to ink these dies, but they are an optional stamp. These are small dies, so actually my favorite and quickest way to add ink is actually just to use a brush marker. So that could be a Marvy marker like I'm using here, or there are markers made by Tombow, there are brush markers made by Stampin' Up! So there's different companies that make brush markers that can be used to ink stamps. And I just tend to prefer the brush markers because these dies are so small. It kind of saves my fingers from getting inky, but I will show you a way to do it with an ink pad as well. And you can definitely adjust the contrast by just what color combination you choose. So this one's pretty light because I used a gold marker on yellow cardstock. And then here's the beard and mustache using a gray marker on gray cardstock. You can use ink pads. So here's a Stampin' Up! ink pad. It's really juicy, so I'm going to just lightly press the die into the ink pad, saving my fingers by not using the edges. And then I'm going to use my quick stick to pick it up and move it to my cardstock and run it through my machine. Okay, so even though I used an extremely juicy ink pad on a very small die, my fingers are fine and I got a lot more contrast because I used a darker color. I do recommend that you clean the dies after using them as stamps, but you don't need any harsh chemicals. Just a rag and some water is all you need. Just squirt those dies with water and wipe them clean. Okay, the rest of the dies in the set are pretty self-explanatory. I've cut them out of the appropriate colors, and now I'm just going to assemble a couple gnomes. Okay, let's start with assembling a girl gnome. So for that one, I'm going to use a little bit of ink around the bottom of the chin and the nose. The beautiful thing about dies is that you make all the color choices. So skin tone, hair color, completely up to you. I put the braids on first and then top the head with a hat and either of the hats will work. I've chosen the smaller one for her. And I love my Lineco Neutral pH adhesive in my fine tip bottle for assembling our little small characters as well as my quick stick to pick up the pieces. Okay, so now I'm adding her nose and what I like to do is have the nose just barely overlap the hat a little bit. Then I just add a little adhesive at the top of the body and attach her to it. There is a die in the set that will cut three matching tiny bows. Those can be used in hair or they can be used as a bow tie. The gnomes look cute with or without shoes, so that's completely optional. If you want to add the shoes, send just a little bit of glue at the bottom of the body and then add the shoes. There's a tiny heart in the set that looks cute on the hat or on the body or even in the middle of the snowflake. The gnomes look cute without hands, but you do have them in the set in case you want to add them. There aren't any arms. Those are just sort of implied. So you can definitely add those hands at different angles. You can also cut them out of a color and then they'll look like mittens. Okay, so she is assembled and ready for a card. To make a gnome with a beard, you don't actually end up seeing very much of the head at all, but it ends up being a good base for construction. So I put the hat on first, then the beard, then the mustache. Then I put the nose just right in the middle of the mustache. The die set includes a die to cut three little jingle bells, so those are perfect for the ends of the hat when you're making Christmas gnomes. And I think they look best cut out of a metallic cardstock. Then I attach the head to the body, and of course you're kind of in control of height there as far as how far up you place it to make the gnome either shorter or taller. One look would be to add the bow tie kind of in the middle of the beard as though it were peeking through. 
if you were making a lot of gnomes for like Christmas cards, you could just skip the shoes and skip the hands because they look great even without them. Now on the hands, again, you can choose the angle. There aren't any arms in the body, so in this case, I'll just have the hands pointing downward. There's a snowflake in the set that works really well for winter and Christmas gnomes, and that could be attached to the hat or attached to the body, or their little hands could be holding it. Okay, let's talk about that bonus idea of a Christmas caroler. For that, I'm going to use a head and add some rosy cheeks with a pencil. And then for a nose, I just use one of the hands, and it doesn't matter which one, I'm just going to arrange it so that the rounded part of the hand is the only part visible from the front. The mouth is the nose cut out of black and then arranged vertically. Next I attach the head to the body and then for hair I'm just using a beard and then attaching that behind the whole piece. For a songbook I use a mustache turned upside down just glued about midway up the body and then I add some shoes at the bottom and then some hands to hold the songbook. And if you were making a snowy scene, you could even add the snowflake behind the caroler's hair. Okay, so that is the basic assembly of the tiny gnomes. And you can see there's just lots of variations that you can do with those pieces. So just experiment with, say, the angle of the braids or the height of the gnome. You could, like I said earlier, cut the hands out of a color to be mittens. You can explore using the eyes visible and maybe having the mustache in front and the beard in the back as hair. We do have a previously released gnome and Santa set and you may be wondering how do these tiny gnomes compare in size. So I'm here to show you. Here is one of the gnomes out of the gnome and Santa set next to the tiny gnome. So the tiny gnomes are definitely smaller, but not so small that you couldn't use both together. I've combined the tiny gnomes with some of the other dies in the same release, like the Long Nature Edges 2 for the front of this card, and then inside is the Garden Bench pop-up, the Street Lantern pop-up, the new Hello, Long Nature Edges again, and then you see those gnomes just kind of hanging out on the bench. Merry Christmas instead of Hello, but otherwise a lot of the same dies in this holiday-themed card. So the Garden Bench pop-up again, the Street Lantern pop-up, the tiny gnomes decorated as Christmas gnomes, and then the snowflake border out of those same long nature edges too. So you really do get year round use out of these dies. So let's take a look at a few ideas by our very talented design team. I love the shimmer of this card by Fran Sabad where she's used a foil machine in the background with one of our pattern plates, then the street lantern pop up and a trio of tiny gnome carolers. Sandy Diller converted our house and fence pop-up into a church and then added a trio of carolers in front. The tiny gnomes are really going to work with any of our pop-ups and Frances Byrne here shows them being used with the parcel pop-up. Check out the wonderful coloring of the tiny gnomes on this card by Karen Aiken. She's turned a pivot panel's die sideways. So this is clever. Lois Bach used some pattern paper that had a scene in it and then added to the scene with the tiny gnomes. Fran Sabad with an adorable rock and rectangle card featuring the tiny gnomes. And then Fran again with a wonderful card front featuring a whole bunch of tiny gnomes. And then Fran also made a bunch of fun Christmas tags. The Tiny Gnomes die set is available at a lot of your favorite online and local retailers, as well as on our website, karenberniston.com. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com, where you can find out information about purchasing these dies, as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.